Oh, do you want me to, uh, sorry, of course. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, yes, he's doing <laughs> the thing to let me know that he's going to start. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> all right, so we have our last character in all of Frosthaven, which is kind of sad um, to unbox, and he's the Shards, which I don't know if you're meant to get last or if we could have gotten it earlier, but... I mean, that's a discussion for the actual pod, I guess. I don't want to fill this up with my rambles and thoughts. Um, Gaz has taken the helm of the shards. Uh, I guess what do we have? Maybe we start with the mini. Look. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so we've got the mini. So I'll uh, try and... Uh, just just full disclosure. Yeah. We did open the mini on the day you took it back. So we yep. had a look because I won't be able to hide my, my disappointment or, or anything like that when you reveal it. Uh, hopefully this shows up. Uh, Looks like you're holding twigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really weird. <laughs> like, there we go. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, okay, cool. So when we first saw it, how did you describe it, Cass? Uh, I don't know. Is it is was what I said appropriate for the internet? A hundred percent. Okay. Um, In fact, we I can provide know, a think... link as well for people who also would like to buy um, <laughs> Shard's like merchandise. I... I think I said it's like a like a dude in a gimp suit. Hmm. Yeah. Is it still looking that way? Now that you've well, slapped some paint on it? Now that I've slapped on paint, um, I dare say the most interesting part of painting this mini was doing the base. They put a lot of effort into the base. Hmm. And then it's like they ran out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's not so much that like I, I think that looking at this and I had a quick look at a couple of the pictures the pictures on the card to know what it was supposed to look like. I think I can see the idea of this looking cool, but as a mini, it wasn't very interesting to paint. And it's a lot of the edges are smooth as well, which means it's hard to I mean, I'm not a very good painter, so it's hard to get good kind of textures across those bits and pieces. Hmm. Um I had a look online, there's some really cool ones out there, but they are a bit again still plainish. Like if I compare those really good ones to other really good ones other people have done of other minis. Yeah, there's uh so yeah, I'm hoping that the mini isn't an indication as to the excitement levels of the character. Yeah, well we should find out. Let's find out. So we have ta da uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, let's see this. And the winner is... And let's see if we hey. can actually get this right. Uh, look, if we don't get something wrong, it's just not us, right? But I'll That's try true. and not get all of it wrong. Yeah, but we, so, we already uh, had this chat. We can't be so wrong. That's right. That's right. Uh, all right. So I won't read the fluff, but I am a Savas. All right, let me Shatter get, song. I'll bring this up now. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm seeing a bit of spice here already. Well, I'm too busy looking at the giant dick hole in his mouth. What's, what's going on? Hey, hey, hey. Don't what? disrespect me. That's Harry me. Pipe of the mini. Yeah, that's it. Just leave me alone. Uh, okay. Cool. So this, uh, it's a Savas uh, and Shatter song, all right? So uh -huh. this is the sound. Okay, Shatter song. That sounds pretty cool. Okay. What I want to jump straight to is the complexity, which is three, which I think we've determined means absolutely nothing. Yep. Uh, the element elemental affinity is mm. daddy. I Betty. love it. I love okay. it. Now we we can't talk too much because we want other spoilers, but you are playing a character that does want elements, and two of those elements are listed there. So uh, that is cool. yes, right. you're right. You're right. Yes, yes. So that's, a that, great that's gonna thing. be good. We've got some overlap. I know. I know. And and the other dude has the other one. Uh, that, that's it. So uh, and looking at this, it's very uh, mixed. Like uh, we were, the last couple of characters we've done have been very like, you know, they have none of this, right? Like very, very low. But this is kind of What's the highest on... bar, guys? Ooh, it's a support. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, that's actually uh, out of the four of us, I'm the only one that enjoys playing support. So um, with a bit of control as well. So, okay, cool, cool. It's um, a good spread. Yeah, yeah. Look, from from – if those bars mean anything at all, and I'm not convinced that they really do, uh, I'm excited about what's on those. Yeah. So, very good. All right. So, uh, it doesn't look like there's many rules, which is good. So, there's less stuff for me to get wrong. Uh, let's have a look through. If you look at the class notes, you vibrate with the frequencies of everything around you. Okay. Slowly yeah. building up resident. resident. Okay. I'm First thing I'm going to get wrong. Resonance. Resonance, that's right. Yeah. That can be unleashed for a variety of effects. Okay. You're a vibrator, guys. 
I am, and I can build up to release a variety of effects. It's multi-faceted. Yeah. Okay. Many settings. Many settings, yep. At the end of each of your turns, you gain one resonance. Resonance. Because I've stuffed this up the first time, I'm Mm. now going to say it wrong every single time. Just say it your way, and it's fine. Resonance. Hmm. Which is tracked by placing one of those... Um, tokens yep. on the left. Yeah, okay, cool. So it's got like a, you can see it's got like a little tracker. Yeah. Okay. Um. Just uh, just, just to cut in here, I've not played a character that has a track on the left. Neither have I. Honestly. No, this is the first one because like had, Mark, Phil. Yeah, we, they've had both of them, right? Cause yeah. Had one, Phil's had two mm-hmm. and Mark's had one without, yeah. again, without going into it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um. You start each scenario with one and can have a maximum of five, okay? Uh, they can be spent in a variety of ways through your ability cards. Okay, so it's a build up a resource and then spend them on card. Okay. Uh, you have strong wave actions, which you must spend at least one resonance to perform. Their power, scaled by X, is dependent on the amount of Oh. Okay. All right. So, I mean, so it sounds like they have build up resource, spend resource, do abilities. Some abilities require it to do anything. Got you. To play. Okay. okay. Uh, we are educated, outcast, and persuasive. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, it looks persuasive. Nice. Uh, I think it has crap health. Is that the worst? No, that is medium. Oh, is it medium? Is that yeah. drifter health? It is. Because the lowest one at level one is six. Ah, oh, okay, cool, cool. All right, that's all right. Um, and the little example there is lifting voice, and it's got X, wave X, minus X. Yeah, okay, cool. I, guess I can't we'll really tell. It's really blurry on my screen, but yeah, I think it's my yeah, eyesight. We'll, we'll look at it. The, yeah, it's probably us, not the character or the production value. Um, yeah. All right, let's get out. The cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will switch to the uh, website thing, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm going to read off the cards just so I have a reference to make sure we do these in the same right order. Sure. Okay? Yep. Um, so the first one I've got is Unrelenting Whale. Uh, like not like a whale, like in the ocean whale, got but you. like a whale is in like a scream. Okay. Although now I want an unrelenting like Yeah, whale. yeah, yeah. That'd be amazing. Like, It'd just be like, just you can't stop me. I'm going. Yeah. Uh, cool. So this is one of the wave minus X ones. Okay. It's a burn. Top is a burn. Yeah. Attack X in a cone. Okay. So it's like how many you spend, right? Yep. I think so. I okay. think it's very hard to mess that up. Ooh. Okay. So try if you'd like. Minus X. Yeah, okay. So oh. you have strong right. actions. You must spend at least one to perform their power. Yeah, I, th- I, I, I would assume, sorry. There's no other real way to read that. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, okay. That's it. Yeah, and I suppose the clarification of you need to spend one is so that you can't just spend none. So I yeah. couldn't just burn this for 2 XP and do an attack of zero on those mm-hmm. spaces. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Makes sense. Uh, cool. All right. So oh, we have a burn first up. This, this will be interesting. Oh, I didn't see how many. Hey, what's the hand size? Oh, oh, 10. Is it? 10. Okay, yeah. okay. 10. Got you, got 10. you. All right. All right. So this, um, this in, in a best case scenario, you've got like five targets potentially taking five damage each on average as oh, yeah. a burn. Yeah, okay, that's not bad. Well, it's one. really not that bad. It's a level one card yeah. as a burn. That's true, that's true. Um, initiative 26, which is all right as well. That's probably as high as I like to go with a low initiative card. Mm-hmm. Um, the bottom is a move four, uh, spend a wave. I'm going to just call them waves now. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, spend a wave to push two. Push the range one. Yep. So okay. the top one is similar to, I guess, another class that I'm playing right now where it, it is part of being able to play the card. If you don't have any of those tokens, you can't play the top for its ability. The bottom, you can always play. And yep. it gives you that flexibility, and that's not a mandatory one. That's just you can do that to get that. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, next, we have Lifting Voice. Where's that? Uh, so, there Lifting Voice yep. is a 29 initiative. 
Uh, mm-hmm. The top is uh, suspend X waves. Grant all allies within range three and self move X. Ooh, and that's not a burn. Okay, cool. So they're not all going to be burns. I thought they might like kind of all be down the burn thing, but no. Okay. Wow. wow. And create wind. You're a minstrel. I am a minstrel. Wow. Okay, cool. Ah, it's a top action. That's like, that's rough. Why? Well, I mean, what, not being able to attack? Yeah, but you're a support, remember? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, okay, I forgot. Uh, okay, interesting. Uh, and then I get an XP for that as well, so that's pretty nice. cool. And then the bottom is muddle all within range two, and you can spend a wave to make it range three. No, plus range three. Plus range three. Thank mm. you. This is why we have the wrong guy and the right guy on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so that becomes almost room model. That's range five. That's yeah. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. That's worth a token. Uh yeah, that seems that that seems pretty worth, right? Like it's yeah, cool. This is one of those cards that I find is very um the top is so good, obviously, because of how unique it is. Anything that grants, like, this is all allies within range three. Yeah. It's going to be hard pressed to um, sit there and go and, and be spamming the bottom of that card when that top is so good. Unfortunately, it's similar to something I ran into with a similar class in that you don't benefit from it. No, no, I get to move. It's self. Never mind. So this is why you're here. <laughs> so. I did I did read that the first time around. I'm like, oh, I was like, oh, no, wait, I do. I guess the thing is, though, that that's a – depending on how hard these tokens are to gain, yeah, like spending three or four of them to move everybody around is probably still pretty unique because most people move themselves around. Genius, guys. That is just genius. Yeah. Um, so – but uh, I think it's definitely, I think to your point, when the top isn't useful, I feel like making the bottom range five means it almost always is useful. True. Right? Like there's going to be something that you can muddle. And we don't have a lot of muddle in the game really that we throw out there. So it's not like it's going to over overlap. So. No. Um, cool. I was just looking at the um, resonance tokens. So you start a scenario with one, right? And then at the end of each of your turns, you get one. And then, of course, you're probably going to have cards and other uh, and other things that are going to give it to you. So, yeah. I'm just okay. trying to get how hard is it to get these tokens. Um, Do you say at the start of my turn I get one? End of your turn, I believe you get one. End of my turn. Okay, cool. So going into, okay, so going into the yes. next turn, you're always going to be able to play one of these cards to at least a value of one. Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, next one, Heartening Harmony. I am basically like a bard, right? But instead of making it like a bard character, they made it like this weird crystal monster. Queen of Pain, yeah. Yeah, correct, yeah. Just screaming uh, at everyone. Oh, could be Queen of Pain. I'd love to paint that mini. That'd be heaps good. Yeah, it would. So, uh, okay, so this is initiative 30. So we're slowly getting worse. So first <laughs> it was 26, then it was 29, now it's 30. Um, now we're in, like, I don't like 30. 30 and above is, is no good. That's true. Uh, okay, so it's another spend... X waves, uh, heal X plus two at range X plus one. Yeah. So the more you commit, the bigger the heal and the bigger the range. Cool. Okay. So even at one, it's range, it's two. heal three, range two. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. No, it's actually really good. Uh, it's obviously um, got an elemental trigger to it as well and, and, and XP. I mean, something that we don't have a lot of ever in our Frosthaven journey, but especially now, is heals. Yeah, we don't. Um, and we have also have a few people who like to get themselves into positions where they need a lot of healing. Mm-hmm. That is a, a big part of it. What I'm curious about from our campaign now, where we're at, mm-hmm. is that just the general like idea of so far what this is kind of doing is giving me a little bit more confidence in a dealing with those cards that make things worse and also um bumping the difficulty up by one or something like that right that's that's actually yeah good point we will maybe we can chat about that on the mm. pod now that we kind of know this but yeah that's a that's a really good point mm. uh the bottom move one i hate move ones they always seem so bad like i feel like they always should be move twos um, well, it means it means it's got to be good, right? Uh, wave to strengthen self. Okay. 
Okay, interesting for a character that I have not seen an attack card yet with. Oh, your first oh, the, card. Oh, the first one. Yeah, true, true. Okay, I can do <laughs> Straight yeah. the whole thing. Why not? Uh, that's it. Why not? Uh, cool. All right. I mean, again, that seems interesting. Uh, and a heal and a, and a baby move. So, cool. Yeah, so far, like, the the whole wave thing with all the tokens. You've got a move, you've got an attack, and you've, now you've got a heal. So, that's, yep. that's the only three cards you really need to bring. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, next one, forceful vi vibrations. Okay, cool. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck, that's terrible. Yeah, I know. Yep, yep. Uh, the <laughs> initiative twenty-seven. So we're going back slightly, back down, which is good. We're good towards uh towards the good side. Uh, we have an attack three at range two, and I can spend a wave to increase the range and give it push and muddle. Mm. Okay, cool. Uh, and then the bottom is a move five with jump and I gain two waves and I I'll, uh, create, create light, mm. but it is a burn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So five with jump burn. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a setup card or a, yeah, oh, that's right. I mean, again, this is one of those ones where the top will probably be useful most turns, even without spending any resources. Um, and then the bottom's there in case you need to, you know, GTFO or something like that. Yeah. I think um, having a push on there makes, cause in my head I'm like, uh, um, your range three, attack three, but you are using one of your prime resources. Uh, Muddle's always good. I'm comparing it to other cards that I've seen, and then you throw in the push two as well, and I'm like, oh, okay. It suddenly elevates it to just a, a a more consistent and better flexible. Better yeah, flexible. it's it's interesting with that, right? Because if it had didn't have the restriction, if it just said like it was in a without spending it, it was like an, a ranged attack with push and muddle. It's probably not hitting for three, right? Like it's probably hitting for like one, two maybe, something mm. like that. So I think having the option of spending one of those tokens to have the utility is an interesting way of doing it. Mm. Um, it's like kind of pick your poison. So cool. Uh, and I hope I see more of that. I hope this becomes more around like use the token to give yourself utility or just do like a base effect that's still pretty good. Yes. Uh, cool. Uh, all right. Resonant Frequency. Here we go. The a classic uh, Savas thing of destroying obstacles. Yeah. Right. Destroy one obstacle within range three to perform. Attack two, targeting all enemies adjacent to the obstacle destroyed. Eat leaf to make it an attack three. I feel like every single Savas, Savas we see has this card and this ability in some capacity. It 100%. This one looks clean. Yeah. Just... No other restrictions other than just pick an obstacle yeah. and blow it up. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't say one hex obstacle as well. We know we've had situations where we've That's had true. some really awkward two and three hex obstacles in the way, um, which is kind of cool. Um, and it just does damage to everything. So, yeah, again, probably one that uh, – we'll, we'll look at the bottom. 88 initiative as well. So, I mean, we're at the high end of the good scale on that one. Interesting. And then the bottom. Gain two resonance. Deal two damage to self and then mm -hmm. brittle self. Mm -hmm. Good thing those aren't the other way around, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. All right. I mean, that's a generator, right? So I feel like that's a, yeah, that's an interesting card. It's, again, it's one of those situations when you put it a utility type card, a type ability. So the top is obviously not going to be useful all the time, really useful when you want to clear paths or in high density kind of scenarios. But the bottom is you, pretty much always going to be helpful. Mm. So it's kind of like spam the bottom until you need the top. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't mind that. No, I like it. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be important um, for a, just, you know, the first at least couple of scenarios. Yeah. Some, it's a good spread so far. Yeah, it has been, actually. A lot of different abilities. So, yeah. um, And, I mean, like, realistically, getting one at the end of your turn plus that two, that basically means you play this... And then on your next turn, you have three more than whatever you had. Mm. So it seems like getting to the higher amounts isn't going to be super hard. Yeah. Um, so cool. Uh, foreboding Tremors. Oh, Tremors. Such a good movie. Oh, I haven't Actually, seen it. Never heard of it. Oh, okay. All right. uh, attack two. Immobilize. Uh -huh. And it's kind of targeting two. Adjacent in like that little triangle thing, right? Yeah, that's that's on right so far, correct? Yep, yep. 
Okay. And then spend two waves. We haven't seen a two. This 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 has got to be good. To add one to the attack and push one. Oh, that wasn't as good as I thought. No. I was hoping that it would be higher than plus one. I mean, so what's that? On average, you hit two targets at six damage immobilized. They both can get pushed. Actually, the push attached to the mobilize is pretty good. Yeah, actually, good call. Good call. This, yeah, attack two in melee. Like, a, a melee attack that immobilizes always seems really janky because it it's means hard. you've got yeah. to run away, right? Um, or you, you use it on range things, but you're right with the push. That could it's be literally a, um, the push that saves that card. And 21 initiative, which, again, I always, classic me, forget to say True. the initiative at the start, is, again, pretty quick. So, interesting. Mm. Uh, and then the bottom, we have uh, uh, move three. And then muddle all within range one. I see these kind of cards, I feel like, more often than I probably have. Mm. And they always just seem hard to pull off if you want to maximize the, the move three and the muddle. This, to me, becomes a move three, and I have if I happen to be adjacent to one thing, that thing's going to be muddled. Do, yep. you, do you get what I mean? I I'm exa feel exactly the same way. Every single yeah. one of these. Because there was, I think I had some with the Geminate. So that's when I first saw them. And now I've kind of gone through all these classes and you do these ones pop up and I almost never get to utilize the ability on the bottom because I'm usually using it for the move. Yeah. Because I think anything that's adjacent or range one becomes really tricky. I think when you can bump that up to be range two, yeah. then they start being out of getting to a position where you can utilize them. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, so far, I think other than the first card, which was move four, uh, this is my highest move, so... Oh, you a slow person. Mm, seems yeah, like okay. it. Seems like it, so... Uh, cool. All right. We've got Sonic Shock. Oh, it could have been Sonic Boom. I could have been... What's that guy? No, uh, Guile. Street Fighter? Guile, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But then we get, like, Giles. season Giles is like the, the British version of him. Giles? Yeah, he's like Buffy. the British version. <laughs> Okay, too many tangents. <laughs> uh, all right, Sonic Shock uh, goes at fifty-eight. This is the war. Oh, that's the worst. Like it's pretty bad. <laughs> pretty uh, bad. I, attack two at range three. I can spend a uh, resonance to eat wind and brittle. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. We haven't really had brittle on a stick. A range have, brittle as well. Yeah, we have some access to Brittle at the moment, but it seems a little situational. But yeah, range Brittle seems pretty cool. What's also really cool, cool about that card as a level one is it's got two enhanced slots, one next to the range and one on the um, attack, further making it potentially better. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Yeah. And then the bottom is move three, so our old friend. Yeah. Gain one if you're adjacent to at least four empty hexes. Okay, that's probably... Better than the other move three we just did with four boating tremors. Now I'm card. gonna probably see um, ask this multiple times of what classifies as empty. Empty means nothing at all in it, right? Mm. Uh, can't have doors. To, to, uh, yeah, okay. Cool. Um cool. yeah, okay. I'm just Yeah, okay. No, it's um it's it's good. It's a good card. It, it's it makes sense because the initiative is terrible. So yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's just the law. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, all right, <clears throat> next one. Precious Gems. Ooh, Initiative 10, Spicy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Attack 3. Yeah. Ooh, Spend a Resonance to Loot 1. That's pretty that, cool. It's a top as well. Yeah, well, that's what we've been talking about, our lack of loot in and or ability to loot. So Because the majority uh, of loot cards are on the bottom, but they're not usually attached with a move either. So mm -hmm. positioning is always awkward with them. That's that actually, yeah, really true. So this means I can move somewhere and then I can attack. The only problem is I need a target because you can't you can't just move and not attack with it because the loot is part of that, right? No, I think they're two separate abilities because they've oh. got the line... You'll notice oh, okay. on um, Foreboding Treasures how it's got that tiny little line below for the bonus, like the top. It's like connected. Yeah, okay, I see. Yep, Whereas yep. Precious okay. has got a clear break. Okay, cool. So I don't need to. So it's just, it's attack three. And then if you would like to, you can also spend one 
thing to do. Oh, yeah? no, I'm starting to second guess myself now. No, that's okay. We'll, we'll double check that. that that's a minor yeah, okay. thing. Because all not, the other ones do, but otherwise, why yeah, would yeah. I? That, yeah, okay. That's why I was thinking because they usually have that line connecting. They do, that, yeah. But uh, this is just a line. So, okay, cool. All right. I'm sure all we'll right. get many comments, but mm, that's fine. Mm, mm. Uh, and then the bottom, move two. Mm -hmm. Reveal the top card of the monster ability deck of one monster within range two. Oh, wow. Eight okay. Wind to do it at range plus three. Again, thank you for pointing that out before. So range five. Um, Is this one doable without too much fiddliness considering we use... Uh, x I think so, yes. X I think okay. it'll be fine. I know we 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 got an item once that did something similar to this and we redrew it because it was going to be a nightmare to manage. That was forever ago. Um now I think a lot of these are easily and we're more familiar with the app. I'm almost certain I I already know how I would do that. Okay. Um cool, so cool. I mean that's super unique. We've never seen anything I mean, other than the item we just talked about, but uh we've never seen any character abilities do this. Um, no. And uh, I guess this is one of those things where <laughs> when we get in those positions of like, I wonder if we're going to get screwed here, as long as we know the turn before, like picking cards, right? Going in initiative 10 kind of lets us all plan around that a bit more. Yeah. I go first. I look at that card, see what it is. Everyone knows what that monster is doing the following turn and yeah. then they can turn that turn and the next turn accordingly. So. Yeah. What also, as only recently have I considered this, other than obviously seeing initiative and seeing whether you're going to get booked and whether they're pulling that card that we were dreading that they were going to pull, you can also, um, this is also really handy for elemental usage to see whether or not something's going to get stolen. Mm -hmm. right? yeah, yeah, okay. Or generated. Because if you can't generate it, but, you know, you need ice or something and there's a frost team in there, you can have a look to see whether they're going to generate it to make sure your initiative goes after them mm. and then use it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It's just, it's very interesting. We'll, um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I feel as well, like where the top's not going to be useful because there's nothing in range. The bottom is, I mean, especially at range five, but yeah. hopefully be able to make use of it. So yeah, cool. All right. Uh, empowering pulse. Oh, this sounds like it should be cool, right? It just all sounds sexual. Like, I mean, they're not, Really, but they just do. They literally sound like settings. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a little switch. It's like, what do you feel like today, guys? Sorry, sorry. Uh, okay. Well, on that, uh, this is Initiative Twenty Two, so it's uh, <laughs> it's it's gone reasonably quick. Uh, it is a burn. So the top is a burn, uh, and only a little burn because some of them you get two XP for, and some of them you get one. Mm. Okay, cool. Uh, so it's attack five at range two. Gain two resonance, create wind. Okay. I mean, yeah. Mm. It, it, the bottom? Yeah, I'm sure I'm yeah. sure it's amazing. Um, it just looks a little vanilla on paper. And only because you haven't played it, it's so hard to determine how much. I mean, obviously the resonance tokens are worth a lot, but I don't know. Right now when I'm looking at it, I'm not reading it as it's creating a bunch of elements or it's adding a status effect or any of that kind of stuff. Cause right now it's an unknown currency, despite seeing yeah. all the cards that it can be used with. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's exactly it. It's uh yeah. Gain two resonance means not much at the moment. Considering we've seen them one to two be worth one or two damage. Mm. Uh, and that doesn't, but I mean, look a small and small range, like range two sucks, right? That's basically melee, but you can't be melee cause then you'll get disadvantaged, which yes. is kind of more annoying. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like, anyway, as the top of a burn, let's see the bottom, uh, grant one ally within range to strengthen self and one shield. That's pretty cool. That's wording is really weird. Uh, yeah. Cause of the grant and then, yeah, but they, so, they get strengthened. Oh, so they're strengthening themselves. Yes. You're telling okay. them to strengthen they... and, and stick a shield up. Okay, cool. Yeah. But then which they is, get a shield cool. for the round. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, that is that is actually really cool. Mm, I like it. That that's cool. what we talked about with the previous unboxing. When it comes to a burn card like that, you want the other to be relatively infinitely spammable, and that yeah. one is. The range too tricky without it having a move though, right? That's true. 
So it is one of those situations where uh, unless I can get myself into position, which I suppose we did have a look at the first card. Uh, no, the second card, which was lifting voice, grant all allies within range three and self move X. So that's a top move. Yeah. So it actually works in some instances with this one to be able to move forward, grant other people move, but then also be able to chuck this out. So, yeah, okay. Um, I'm empowering pulse. Yeah, I guess that, that makes sense, I guess. All right, cool. Devastating shout. This has got to be good, right? Like this is... Oh, it has to be. Yelling at someone really <laughs> loud and it's devastating. Uh, okay, so this is another spend uh, tokens to use. Attack X plus one at range three. Okay, nice and simple. Just spend tokens to do damage, right? Yeah. Uh, and make wind. So wind generator, which is good because I haven't really been paying attention to what needs it, what doesn't, but that's going to be, I think, part of the juggle. It's a good point, yeah. Uh, it goes to 68, so it's garbage initiative, so therefore the card's got to be better. Uh, and then at the bottom, we've got spend a resonance, destroy one adjacent obstacle or trap. Move three, and then spend another one to destroy one adjacent obstacle or trap. Hmm. I mean, flexible. Mm -hmm. I, I I can't. Yeah, okay. There there will be some scenarios, obviously, where that's really good or or has a has a purpose. And when it's not, it's a blow your your residence basically. Yeah, um, I mean, like. The top, I mean, yes, exactly. The top is like a, a good one to have because I can kind of see, okay, I can kind of see a, a world where because I gain one at the end of every turn, right, there's going to be a point where I like get to full and I don't have a way to burn through them. And so having something like this is good, right, because you don't want to sit at max and then rest. I'm, I'm sure there's rules and stuff around resting, and but you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get to a point where you could just like, the cards you're playing just means you're, you're stacked and, mm. and your bucket's full. And we don't like full buckets. No. God, no. So, no. yeah, interesting. I just feel like the bottom, though, destroying an obstacle for no benefit always feels bad, especially if it costs a resource. The right? benefit is it's not in our way, guys. No, I get that. I get that. And so, but that's but that makes it even more niche. Like, yeah. if it's destroy an obstacle to gain to heal or to gain a, uh, a resonance or to do something, right? Then you can kind of go out of your way to try and destroy them. And you go, oh yeah, I can take this because when we don't need to kill something in our way, I can make use of it through the benefit we get from destroying it. Yeah. But when it's purely just a, a move and destroy obstacles, the only benefit then becomes when there's shit in our way, um, which means the top has to be spammable. And I guess it kind of is. I mean, considering I can give myself advantage, like strengthen, I mean, you know, attack six at range three. You'll always be able to play it, obviously, because of the end of the previous round, you're going to gain at least one, mm -hmm. right? And then... That's true. You, you could have a juicy... Two, right? Pardon? At worst, it's attack two. Correct. And yeah. a wind generator and an XP. So I mm. think it's actually fairly solid um, with a slight room for other stuff that it can do, like obviously from more um, resonance tokens. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, no, that's a really good point, actually. It is. The top seems solid with the attack, the wind generator, and the XP. It sounds like a solid card just to have there, and the bottom is like a bonus. Sometimes it'll be useful. Sometimes it'll just say move three. The other hard thing to, to, to assess right now is what your AMD deck looks like, because if you've got a lot of fun, weird stuff in there, you may just want to turn over a card just, just to an attack, because it may end up being worth it for the future. And I assume there's going to be ones that are about you know, getting lots of resonance tokens or um, yeah. healing or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, good point, actually. That's a good point. All right, well, we're into the X cards now. Uh-huh. Uh, so this is, um, oh, okay, I'm going to stop this up. Um, Pamel, Pamelamitus Yorp. What the hell's a Yorp? I don't know. I mean, I just got stuck on the first word and then I got to Yorp. <laughs> uh, Yorp is a harsh or hoarse cry or yelp. There we go. All right. Or as the verb, a shout or exclaim hoarsely. Okay. So it's like, and I imagine Camelotus is like for like calamity. Calamity. Yeah. It's like a. Uh, calamity, yeah, that's yeah, really, that's like a I was thinking, yeah. Okay. So it's a really bad, uh, strained yelp. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Interesting. Thematic. Uh, I mean, do you think that when they were designing this class, they just went to the Thoros uh, on Google and just said, yell, I want every word that is 
like that. And then they also went to destroy or devastating. And then, oh, we want every word that's associated with this. And then they just did like a random just matching. Yeah. Yeah. What's really cool about this character, all right, really cool, is that you've got 10 band names in your hand, right? (laughs) They're just metal or, or... Alternative band names. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, anything from, yeah, hardcore to metal to, yeah. We are calamitous yelp. <laughs> uh, maybe that should be the name of our uh, our party. I really like it. Uh, all right. All allies and enemies within range two suffer damage X divided by two. Round it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Based on how many everything. tokens you use. Pardon? Yeah, tokens. Okay. Uh, and that's everyone. Yeah. So basically all figures. Yeah, you can kill Cassandra. Okay, cool. Oh, I mean, we've, we're have we always trying to find new ways of killing Cassandra. <laughs> that's right. Uh, for those that have no context, we're not going to explain that. No. Just watch out the videos. <laughs> uh, so, okay, interesting. Interesting. I feel like considering this one character seems to want to play a, like at the back and supporty, I feel like this was kind of a bit dangerous because it's going to be but yeah anyway we'll see yeah well there's one person in that group that's probably going to prod you and say hey i don't care i'll take the damage make it oh (laughs) (laughs) and you're like yeah but but phil's right there and i'm like that's fine (laughs) you can take it yeah that's fair i did yes you're right i completely ignored the fact that it creates uh grass so uh yes good call and then the bottom move to um now again this all separate? Yeah, okay. Because, like, some of the like, cards that are right there. Uh, I know. Just... Yeah, cool. So uh, I will say it's move two, and then we're spending a residence to stun at range one. And oh, if you okay. eat light, it's Ooh. two targets. Yeah, okay. 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 Now... We've just talked about how some of the move and then do an ability to something at range one usually isn't that great. I feel like this is one you plan around. A million right? percent, yeah. Like this is move two. I mean, move two isn't great, uh, but... There uh, is an enhance next to it. There is, yeah. And and again, we've got the uh, the top move card that we saw before, so there is a chance of relocating with that. But, but even that still just move two, stun within range one seems pretty good. Yeah. No, okay. really good. I'm just looking at some of the previous cards because I know that you've got the token one. I thought maybe it was linked to the token. You remove a token and then it's part of it. But mm. the ones that are separate, like uh, Heartening Harmony and Foreboding Tremors, you could totally do without the move, right? And activate yeah. that. Because yep. they're not okay, linked. Cool. So I'm, I'm dare saying it's not linked. Yeah, look, maybe because most of these seem to be as part of moves, maybe that's there in case you're immobilized where you can't move, you can't perform movement, whereas it, mm. w- separating them there means you still can. So yeah. I think you're 100% right, right? They're, they're separate abilities. You trigger one and then you trigger the next one if yep. you spend the token. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Interesting. Uh, cool. Uh, that seems pretty cool. I mean, 65 initiative is garbage, but uh, the it seems like an interesting card. You know what? This seems like one of those cards that I think I look at and I go, this seems really good. I'm going to take it and I'm going to use it all the time. And then it never gets used because I'm always out of range to stun something and I never want to deal damage <laughs> to everybody. Like, it's kind of one of those cards that I'll hold in my hand and then I will discard on my first rest. Probably. it's. I'm just looking at every other card that we've talked about so far. You've got two light generators and no light spender. So that's your first light spender and only at the moment. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it may be become more reliable because all you're using is, is a trophy. Uh, sorry, is a um, resonance thing um, and a uh, light. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. No context of that. Whatever I just no said. Context. That could anything. Uh, didn't hear anything. Din of battle. Oh, here we go. This is a, uh, a non-setting related. Yes, what's a din? Is it a uh, song? Din of battle. Yeah. Uh, well, I, for some reason, I know what that means, if, like the dinner battle, but I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's the sounds of. It's a director identification number. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, maybe the sounds of or, um, yeah. Yep. 
Cool. Uh, attack two, targeting two, and muddle. Mm -hmm. Gain one resonance if the attack ability targeted at least two enemies. Oh, cool. All right. So that's a, a generator uh, to get in there and uh, and do some stuff. Uh, initiative 14 again. Uh, so it's like super quick so we can get in there and then hopefully get out. You want to say basically like that's sometimes the reason alone to take it. Yeah. Because the top was like, oh, yeah, it's all right. 14. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, and just looking at combinations and stuff like that, like going late with the previous card, the Camalitas Yelp, mm. right? Moving in, even if it's just stunning one thing, right? Then going early and then hitting, well, I mean, maybe you stun two. Yeah, you'd probably want to be stunning two, so therefore you've got two in range. Mm. Then you hit them both and then you run away and then, yeah. Anyway, uh, and then the bottom, you and all allies within range one each add one to one of your attacks this round oh. and I can spend as many tokens as I would like to increase that range yeah. to as many tokens as I spend. That's cool. Yeah, so this is an interesting oh, one again. Oh, God, I just saw a combo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, these cards, I, again, I've seen them pop up in different classes where it's like play to give allies uh, plus attacks. Um, I've even seen self ones and I found that, that they are most of the time not that useful because... Well, no, no. I find them difficult to use uh, because you need to move in position. So you need to be there already, right? And that's that's one of the troubles with it. But being able to increase the range to make other people do it is good because not all adjacent. It's like, hey, cool, I can spend one or two tokens and make this. Uh, well, you actually need to. That's oh, plus X, yeah. So even spending two tokens makes it range three, which is usually pretty easy to trigger. 100%. Range two is usually a sweet spot for most things for any kind of AOE, right? One that That's one token. Yeah, true, actually. One token to, yeah. And I mean, the, I guess the value for that is that that's, if I hit three people with that, that's three damage. Right? Or one so mark. It's kind of, pardon? Or one mark. Or <laughs> oh, oh no it's uh, one of your attacks okay yeah yeah okay yeah okay, that's cool, nice cool. okay yeah, good right. um, thank you but, but i mean you know uh, looking at previous characters through the game um it's allies so summon characters mm. you know could have benefited from this so yeah okay cool all right i, I can see that being okay and the top uh i again i see the top being one of those ones where i would like i want to take this because i want it as a generator mm. and i will always struggle to get two things adjacent to me to hit um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Maybe you're right. 14 initiative might just be good enough to take just because. Uh, and then the next one, um, illuminative tone, illuminative. Uh, so this is 72. Okay. So we're, we're at the top end, mm -hmm. uh, attack three at range two, eat light to add one and gain advantage. Okay, okay. cool. So it's just a nice light eater card. Yeah. It's another light eater. Nice. Uh, and then move three, attack three, all adjacent enemies, and it's a burn. Ooh. Oh, it's a burn. No yeah, XP. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, it's a bit harsh. A little bit. That that Yeah, at least one. Like, none XP? Like, yeah. we want you to lose this card, and we think you should not be rewarded for playing it. Yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's just a... Okay. Cool. Uh, all right. Well, that's the end of the level one cards. So uh, it, it, normally we kind of do a little bit of a recap, but I'll get your thoughts first. What do you, um, what do you think? I like it because it's not sure you've got the resonance. Um, the resonance thing is just a mechanic that they've come up with to add some kind of, you know, flexibility to it. A lot of the characters will have something similar to this. Um, so it's, it's nothing break, like breakthrough. It's nothing that's making me go, whoa, how unique and all of that. But what is cool is the s display of the different play styles that are built into this already. It's going to be very tricky to then work out where it goes from here because where is it going to go into? It's obviously probably going to go down more resonance stuff and give you more flexibility. But holy crap, just based on that, this, this class seems insanely flexible. And I think you're going to really like that because... I don't think two any two scenarios that you're going to play are going to feel the same. Mm. Like yeah, they would point. with other characters. And yeah, I think that it's a beautiful range of different negative conditions. Um, 
just little things like increasing damage, um, giving people shield and advantage or, or, or strengthen. Um, and what was the other one? Uh, granting movement. You've just got so many different toys at your disposal um, that, yeah, just vibrate and pulse at different rates. And yelp. And yelp. Uh, but yeah, so no, cool. A yorp. So yorp. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree with all that. I think that uh, definitely from the back of the card that had all the different ranges up across everything uh, seems very, uh, very much to to fit that in. Um, and I mean, look, just looking at level one cards, it also kind of matches. I I like playing characters like this. Like I like doing a yeah, bit I know of extra shit to help other people and make people have cool turns. So I think there's a few cards here that can help get people out of sticky situations. And I kind of like having yeah. those tools to be able to like, don't worry, don't worry, I got you. Like, you want to move five? You can move five, right? Like, um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be interesting. The um, only thing that I'm slightly let down by is I feel like this kind of character had a little bit of everything. The one thing it didn't have in any capacity was curse. That's the only thing I'm like, really? It's, it's obviously audio related. I don't know. I feel like you could easily fit a curse in there thematically of some of some variety, but obviously these are level ones and X's and an, I haven't looked ahead. So that's true. Maybe the curse has come later. Yeah. Maybe curse spammable curse at level one might be too powerful. I'm not sure. So oh. yeah, that's cool. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I think the other thing is that that you raise is it. Yeah. It'd be interesting to know which direction it goes because there's so many different things and it's not like some of the other characters we've unboxed where there's two or three clear paths. Yeah. This is going to be going to be like, hey, what do you want to do heaps more of? Yeah. Like, Jack of all so, trades, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It actually is giving me uh, like uh, re reminding me a little bit of the snowflake. I can see that. Like just in a different way. Yeah. Attacked some supporty stuff and some other things to just control and mess with what's going on, but a very big range of, uh, of capabilities. So you kind of get to, uh, I guess almost put your own puzzle together. So, mm. uh, cool. All right, let's go through, uh, we'll just do two and three. Sure. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So level two transparency, uh, attack two, range four, uh, reveal the top card of the targets monster of the targets monster ability deck. Okay, so another one to peek at the next card. Uh, spend a resonance to do one attack and pierce one. Not bad. Yeah. So attack, a decent... attack three, range four with pierce, and then the ability card. It's yeah. Not bad. And of course, you've got that initiative. Like, it's another real nice, crunchy one. Yeah, I suppose 13 initiative, again, which I missed is important. And I think Pierce one, I looked at that when you said Pierce, I'm like, eh, it's only Pierce one, but I feel like so many monsters have one shield Yeah, that you're right. Like that's adding a damage and adding a Pierce is in a lot of the cases we find actually probably going to add two damage, mm. which is pretty cool. Cause that kind of then reads on some creatures. I know it doesn't really, but some creatures it kind of reads like, you know, get, make sure you get through that and get that extra damage going and range four. Yeah, so I, I can't even begin uh, to just sorry go through and just think of all of the potential because I think one of the most unique things about this character it's the only character that can consistently um, on when it needs to look at the monster ability deck and my brain is now expanding further into how good that's going to be mm. just even for those retaliate turns where you know is this do I do this like there are actually so many things where we are so dependent on what are they doing. How good is that information going to be? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Actually, I didn't, I didn't even think of that. And being range four, because what's the other one that we had? It was a, uh, a move. It was move to reveal the top card of something within range two. So that's kind of within range four of where you start. So that's pretty good. Or you spend the win to make it within range five. So basically anything in the room. Yeah. But this one being range four gives you, uh, and it's an attack, right? It's not just do nothing. It's actually do do some damage. Uh, and have a look. So yeah, you, you're spot on. You're spot on. We do. We have those turns where people want to plan around stuff and go. Oh, I hope they don't do nothing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's yeah. Um, no, really cool. Or go really early. Even just knowing the initiative. Yes, that's probably the other part that we get cucked by a lot. 
And they're not burns. Neither of those are burns. So, mm. you know, it's, yeah, okay. it's forever going to be relatively useful. Uh, and then the bottom, arrange three, all attacks targeting, targeting you this round game disadvantage. Okay, cool. And it creates light. So it's a light generator move three. Okay, That's good. So if the, the, that, the fact that it had light at the end of it. Mm. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's my one level two card. I forgot that I have to choose between these now. These aren't just, you get them all. Uh, yeah. And then the other level two, Befuddling Bellow. See, again, just, you know, yeah. the thoroughest words for yell. That's true. Uh, grant, so this is a burn. No, it's not a burn. So this is a persistent through the mm. round. Uh, spend X uh, waves. Uh, grant all allies within range two and self. X divided by two shield. Okay, so at five, it's a shield three. Hmm. Um, all Fair allies everyone. within range two. That's pretty big. Uh, but that is more defensive than anything the Banner Spear did. <laughs> don't, don't. You'll get heaps of, we'll get heaps of dislikes for all the Banner Spear lovers. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, I mean, again, that's interesting. I mean, even at one, right? One is giving one shield. Correct. And an XP. Okay, so yeah. One shield to everybody, which is pretty good. Um, so, cool. Uh, and then we've got the bottom, which is immobilize all within range two, and then you can spend a thing to make it range three. So, yeah, okay. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, like, you got like, interesting choices ahead of you. Yeah, I like the top for uh, the defensiveness. I don't really love the bottom. Uh, and then the other card on the flip side, I feel like the top is going to be useful again leaning into that something we have zero access to right looking at the monster mm. deck it's, it's super unique we have you know not that we have a lot of cards that give everyone shields but super unique is uh is, is look at that and then the bottom can kind of be useful as well to not get whacked so yeah it's interesting i'm probably at this stage leaning into transparency but I will do the play with all just the level one and X cards first to see how it plays. You don't even have um, the initiative in either of those cards to be the thing that's going to win you over either, really. That's true. Uh, cool. And then level three, uh, shape the path. So this is another wave X card. Uh, so for each wave spent, perform bless at range one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can use it on different targets. Yeah, okay. Now, this actually was one that came up in the uh, amazing FAQ that our d friend Dwarf has put together. And the to question counter is, exactly what I just said. Uh, can I bless the same character more than once with Shape of the Path? Yes, you can. I was about to say, surely you could. Yeah, okay. Yep, because it's not target, right? It's just saying bless at range one. Yeah. So uh, someone can have five blesses? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, not bad. No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you could give them to yourself as well. That is true. I am at range one of myself. Yeah. Mm. And then the bottom is move to gain a wave. I mean, seems fine. Seems fine. Uh, so cool. And then the other level three is stealth vibrations. Here you go, Daddy. This is a. Uh, that's definitely a setting, right? <laughs> uh, attack to at range three, gain a wave. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, I should go back. With Shape of the Path, the initiative is 40. Okay, mm. so the garbage initiative on that one. Um, and Stealth Vibrations is 35, so equally not helping my choice. No. Uh, so, yeah, attack two, range three, gain a wave, um, and the bottom is move to eat two waves to go invisible. I've never had an invisible character. Haven't you? No. Oh. Like good. ever, I don't even think in any of the. Uh, I might have played the Shadow Blade or whatever it was called in Gloomhaven, but I, other than that, I've never had a character that goes invisible. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about either of these cards. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. They are both uh, not underwhelming, just whelming. I I'm guess. a little underwhelmed. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess as a generator, the uh, like you're probably looking at shape of the path is probably the better generator because it's like I don't need a target. I'm just moving around and move two is usually fine. What's your hand size? Ten. Ten. Yeah. That's, that's the issue. Is that 
Sure, take the, check the path. Obviously, it's a generator, but you're going to have to narrow this down to 10 cards. And I feel like there's a lot of one and X's that are pretty damn good, not yeah. to mention the two. I definitely don't think I'm taking Stealth Vibrations for the Invis because I don't really care about that. No. I don't think, I think that seems to be, if we were talking about archetypes, to be leaning more into the, I want to get into the thick of it and like battle. Mm. And I don't think I will go that way. Uh, and that also, I guess, then the top becomes the key thing. And I don't, I think there's enough ranged attacks that do other interesting things. Yeah. The only um, thing, I, you're going to have to do what you did, what you said you're going to do, which is um, do a practice run. And you will, you will work out throughout that. Ah, oh, I've got all of these tops or all of these bottoms that aren't doing anything or they're not achieving anything. So therefore this will give me a bottom that's going to do something. Um, that's kind of what I find with a lot of the characters is um, mm. you usually mess something up and go, oh, this is definitely weighted in one direction more than the other because essentially you're looking at the top of stealth of vibrations and the bottom of shape of the path and the other two bits are like a bonus really. Mm. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, just because I'm greedy, I'm going to look at one more card. Sure. Is that all right? I'm going to do it with you after we stop recording anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right, level four, concentrated blast. Okay, attack two. Uh, sorry, initiative thirty-eight. Mm. Attack two, range three. Eat a wave to add a target. Eat two waves to add stun. It's pretty juicy. So it's essentially again the flexibility is there, right? So you can eat three waves to make it an attack two, targeting two, stunning two. Yeah. Range yeah, three is pretty good for that too. Yeah, range. Yeah, that that. Yeah, you're right. Range, range. Well, we range three on a top means that you still have at least two movements to get somewhere, right? So that kind of means, and I'm not going to say it's range five, but it means it's range five from where you start most. Yeah. Of the time. Um, and that's kind of helpful. Uh, so okay, cool. The bottom move three, eat a wave. One adjacent enemy suffers two damage. Yeah, I mean pure damage. Great win. Um, move three. Okay. Yeah. Just so on concentrated blasts. Mm -hmm. If we go back to calamitous yolp. Yeah. Uh, with four tokens and light, that is four targets stunned. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> so you're obviously going to move up and hit the two ones that are adjacent to you, but then you can still nail another two from range. That's that's very true. That's <laughs> so, very true. It's not a bad combo, and they're not losses either. No, no. The initiative on those combos is quite gross, though, because that's like yeah. concentrated blast is thirty eight. Uh, so you're probably going after some things, but uh, yeah, good, good. Yeah, would you well, like to stun four things? Well, well yes. the other option is you got two big things stunned over two rounds. That's true, actually. Oh yeah, the the. The chain stunning. Yeah. Yeah, is, is gross. Lock. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. So concentrated blast. Um, stun is always good. Uh, and then the other half of our level four cards is elemental pulse. Uh, so 25 initiative. Uh, elemental. This is, this is going to be the element generators, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, attack four. Uh, eat wind to make it range three. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I can eat light to gain a wave. Okay. So an attack four that I can turn into a ranged attack. And then I can also separately gain a, uh, make it a generator. Cool. And that's an XP. Uh, initiative 25, if I didn't mention that. And then the bottom is a move four, eat wind to make it jump or plus one and jump. Okay. Mm. That's cool. And then I can eat grass to, uh, gain a wave interesting mm. i mean that's kind of like that's just super flexible right yeah like both both the top and the bottom actions are probably fine if you have zero elements yeah yes um, yes they yes they will be um and then what's cool is the top the xp is also not tied to one of those element usage uh usages so that's reliable xp as well yeah I think yeah, that's, that's a true. tough one as well. And I still don't know. Like we said, going into these cards, you know, see which direction it kind of goes in. It hasn't really narrowed it down, really. 
Well, you have I a lot like... more attacks. I mean, four of these yeah. six at- uh, cards are attacks. Yeah. Yeah, I think the um, the thing I'm looking at with the level twos, I think the level twos transparency definitely seems to be the way I'd want to go mm. uh, because while it is an attack, it's the monster reveal. Yes. Plus some defensiveness in the moving and it's got light generation. So I don't know how useful that's going to be, but there were a couple of things that we saw like the bottom of the Yorp. Uh, three is tricky because, again, to your point, uh, they're both underwhelming in a sense. Mm. Uh, and so that's a different conversation. They don't really, they're not doing much there. But then four, four is really tricky because. Because you can grab both of the threes. I don't want either of the threes. <laughs> like that's the problem. Uh, I probably, if anything, I want both of the twos yeah. or both of the fours and none of the threes. So yeah, it is, it is going to be interesting, but you're right. Like it, it's not, none of, none of those. Six cards. I suppose you got the bless and the shielding. They probably are the the buffs for. So. Yeah. yeah no, okay. I don't know. Anyway, uh, do you want to have a quick look at the AMD just to see what's? Yeah, let's have a look. Happening there. All right. Cool. So uh, we have first of all, we'll go through <sighs> the masteries. Yeah. Sure. Quickly. Masteries, so always have zero waves directly before you gain waves at the end of each of your turn. Okay. Okay. So, so you got admit, we've waves. already covered. You've got so many ways of just at least spending one, so. Mm. Okay. And then spend five waves on each of five different wave abilities. Oh. Okay. All right. So you've got to find five of those X spend X cards yeah. and get up to five five times. That seems doable as well. Yeah, it'll probably get easier the further in you get um, yeah. to your levels because I think initially your wave generation is going to be rather crap. Uh, yeah, probably. It probably it's going to start off a bit a bit rough. Well, that's the thing is that unlike some of the other characters that we've seen, that there's not any way of speeding it up necessarily outside of those generator cards. Like there's Mm. no outside of those playing the card to gain that you can. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Perks. All right. Well, this is the best perk I've just seen. Ignore scenario effects. I can join the club. Oh, damn. (laughs) That's not exciting anymore. Uh, and then, okay, let's go through those main ones first. Uh, whenever you short rest, you may eat wind to perform strengthen at range three and eat light to perform Bless at range three. Okay, interesting. I like that. Yeah, okay. So do something when you short rest. At the start of each scenario, you may gain brittle to gain two waves. Oh, you need to. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. That is very cool. I like that. Uh, And then the, uh, whenever a new room is revealed, you may reveal the top card of both the monster attack modifier deck and all allies attack modifier deck. Modifier. Okay, so we get to look at the monster attack oh, modified and, deck and everyone else, and everyone gets to look at theirs. Okay, yeah, okay, that's that's pretty cool. Whenever a new room is revealed, okay. Question without notice. Yeah, does a new room count as the first room? I was literally just thinking that. Interesting. Okay, well, we have to uh, follow that up. Technically, it's a new room, right? Yeah, totally. Uh, cool. So I like. <laughs> I only read two lines of perks, the top two. But that second one is more of that. Like, mate, you will understand everything forever of what they are doing. Oh, wow. Okay. So remove four zeros. Great. Cool. So we're getting rid Love of our that. zeros. Replace two minus ones with two... Z- two minus one cards with two plus zero. Reveal the top card of the target monster's ability cards. Okay. So you're going to have four of those. In yeah. There. Okay. Cool. And I'm that's... Mark's going to get real sick of you going, you know, can, I, can we have a look at the card? And it's, it's the same card. Like, they haven't had a turn yet, I guess. <laughs> I forgot what it does. <laughs> uh, that's actually an interesting thing. That's so much easier to do in the, like, without any apps because you just flip it over and leave it on top up, like, face up. So yeah. anyone would have the ability, because it's open information, right? So anyone would have the ability to go and have a look at it at any time. But, uh, yeah, uh, we got replace. Oh, with a minus one stun. Is that stun? Yeah, that, that symbol I wasn't 100% sure, but it does seem like it is stun. 
Yeah, okay. So lots of stuns. Zero with brittle. Uh, and brittle. Uh, so brittle, the next one. More brittle is good. Zeros with zeros and brittle. Replace two plus ones with generate elements. All the standard stuff. Add Ooh. heal. Heal two Whoa, less add one targeting heal an ally. Two and it's less. rolling. Wow. Okay. Plus one again. The, resonance. the only problem with those good cards being on rollings is that they can get gobbled up by disadvantage. Don't get disadvantage. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. So, um, and then add one plus one gain. A yeah, that was going to be in there. So, well, okay, I cool. guess this the, just those like that that list there. You've got a couple of I think one maybe, but um, there's another one that's about strength and right giving yourself strength and with advantage. Yeah, it gives you so much like gives everyone flexibility, but seems to give you a lot more flexibility. Yeah, well, it seems I, I guess with the first couple of perks like removing the zeros. Four zeros is basically saying that all once you do that, right, um, and then you're replacing two of the minus ones, you and you get rid no, of your four, minus two. Four minus ones. Yeah, yeah, four. Sorry, yes, yeah, so you get rid of four zeros and four minus ones. You're basically saying all of the attack modifier cards in your deck do a thing, which is really an interesting way of doing it with a support character because I feel like that's one of the mistakes they made with some of the classes in Gloomhaven is that they made their attack modifier decks really good because they weren't supposed to attack very often, but it meant that when if you did, you just blew shit up. Yeah. Whereas this is like, hey, draw lots, and you're going to get a lot of cool effects. So you want to draw, uh, and then you'll get cool effects. Rather than drawing for massive damage, you're mm. drawing for, like, you know, yeah, bonuses, which is, uh, which is cool. Mm. I like it, guys. Yeah. It's not too insane and crazy. I think this is a good thing after your last character um, to, to go into. Yeah. And... Yeah, no, I like it. Definitely. So, hey, hey, uh, is there anything else? about it? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. This seems. I think you're 100 percent right. The, the The puzzle of this will be how to maximize the value of everything else. Um, I can see myself leaning hard into the support style of of, uh, of the play a lot more. Um, and yeah, I, I can see this being really fun. I can see it being really fun. So, uh, it's going to be interesting because there are a few things that we're going to need to matchup timings. So I feel like it's going to go back a little bit back to my banner spear days of like, Hey, not what are you doing, but Hey, do you want any of this? It's kind of having people aware of the things that I can give them to make their turns better. Right. Mm. So like, you know, rather than me calling out, okay, cool. I'm going to use this card. So everyone's going to get a bonus. It's more going like, Hey, I can move people around or I can, I can give people advantage or things like that. Uh, and making sure that they, know about it so they can kind of call it rather than me having to ask every turn yeah the probably the thing that i'm only looking into right now just quickly as we wrap up you have one heal card oh i do only have one here so you're I a support but it's not reliant on healing support it's yeah, granting it's movement true. it's saying to everyone hey i know what the enemy is going to do it's like a whole different idea of supporting which traditionally we would always go a supporter will heal. Heal and shield maybe, yeah. you know? So. Yeah, that's a good point actually. I think maybe because we pulled it on like the second or third card, we're like, oh, heals. So this will have heaps of heals. And it's like, that's it. No more heals. But this also does mean um, if you start a scenario with Brittle, you're going to have an interesting time getting it off. Because I don't have. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You don't have true. many heals to spam. Um, I mean, I wonder if that's just an insta buy like the locket, right? The the pendant, yeah. And pendant. the other one is um resonant frequency, which is the one that if you use the bottom of that, you're gonna take two damage. So um you know yeah, it's not something you're gonna at least as easily as maybe some other classes be able to burst heal yourself back up. You've got other tricks to have to rely on. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might I, I like I have don't have a good idea about all the items. So I might have a look through to see about how I get those things or even things that um do regen so there is a, like burn yourself down a little bit stay away from things regen things up and go from there so yeah yeah no this uh this looks interesting I'm, I'm looking forward to a new puzzle i always like kind of learning these things and having a look at the different you know mechanisms i can uh kind of play with and uh this seems like another fun one to to do because it's again not just a how do you squeeze out as much damage as, as you can it's going to be more around you know how do we make everything awesome 100 mm. percent. oh thanks for that thanks for um doing an unboxing with gaz and all his vibrating ways and uh, i guess we will 
uh, see how it all goes um, when we play it on Monday. All right. Peace out. Bye.